This is part two for cures for sexual sins. And I'm not saying this is a be a hundred percent cure where you don't suffer with it anymore, but it would definitely cut away at your sin problem that you have going on. And if you haven't listened to part one, I'll go back and listen to it. But here's some points from the last time. Number one, let every man have his own wife. If you desire a woman, one of the greatest things you can do is live godly and look for a godly wife. And then this will cure a lot of your sin problem because remember one of the reasons you get married is to avoid fornication. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, 9, it's better to marry than to burn. Then number two, looks can kill, look another way. And you know, Jesus said, whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So looks can kill, look somewhere else. The less you look, the less likely you're going to be tempted. Number three, leave the path of evil women. Don't even get around a woman who would even give you the opportunity to commit that sin. Number four, learn to see women as mothers and sisters, or maybe even as daughters or as sister-in-laws. You know, the more you see them as someone that's important to someone else, if you have any type of heart or conscience, that's going to cut back on the dirty thoughts you would have towards them. The next thing, lasciviousness takes everything you have, so give your everything to God. Some people have given themselves over to lasciviousness, as Ephesians 4.19 talks about. Instead of giving yourself over to your horrible fantasies, lustful desires, and the cravings of your flesh, give everything to God. Now we'll start with some new ones. And the next one is, lone wolves get lost, get around people. Sometimes you need to get alone to study and pray and read the Word of God, but too much alone time can kill. It can be bad. It can be really bad. Remember the devil tempted the Lord when he was alone when he was at a weak moment of fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Remember in 2 Samuel 11 that David got off into sin when he tarried at Jerusalem and wasn't out there fighting and he was walking on the roof alone. He had time to watch Bathsheba wash herself in 2 Samuel 11 too. And he didn't just accidentally get a peek he had time and opportunity to feast his eyes on another man's wife. See, most likely, you commit your sexual sin with another person when both of you are alone. Or, you're committing your own sexual sin when you're all by yourself. The best thing to do is stay around people as much as you can. Don't get alone with another person that you might commit that act with, and don't Spend too much time by yourself where you might look at something or do something that you're not supposed to. You know, a lot of men, they have this problem where they want to stay up all night playing video games, stay up all night watching movies while their wife goes to bed, their kids go to bed. That's kind of a bad idea, really. You should, if you can, go to bed when your wife goes to bed. Go to bed when your family goes to bed. That way you're not up all night while everyone's asleep with all these thoughts coming in from the devil. This will help your marriage and it will help you cut back on your sin. And I know people work different shifts. Sometimes you can't go to bed when your wife goes to bed. But if it be possible, you should. Go to bed when your wife goes to bed. Go to bed early. Get up early. Lone wolves get lost. You need to get around your wife. You need to get around someone else. Accountability is a key thing. 
Number two, labor with your hands and you'll be too tired to get into mischief. So you get around other people, don't be a lone wolf, and you labor with your hands, you mix both of those things together, I'll tell you a surefire way to cut back on an enormous portion of not just sexual sin, but any sin, is to go and work a hard job every day and by the time it's all said and done, you'll be too wore out to sin. Ephesians 4.28 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. 2 Thessalonians 3.11, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. See, people that don't work, they get into trouble. 1 Thessalonians 4.11, Paul says, And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So get up early in the morning and you work all day. By the time things are said and done, you'll be ready to go to bed. You will be around people that keep you accountable. And you'll be able to come home and go to bed at night when your family goes to bed instead of staying up all night. And being alone where you'll be m more tempted by the devil because the devil likes to come at the lone wolves. He likes to get you by yourself. But you labor with your hands, you'll be too tired to get into mischief. Now the next one. Lovely thoughts don't leave room for lust Think on these things. In Philippians 4, 7, and 8, it says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, if you're honest and you read that verse and you think about the things that you think about, you examine those things, it says whatsoever things are true. Those fantasies you're having in your head, that's not true. That's all something that's never even going to happen. You're thinking about something that's completely false, probably has never happened, never will happen. So it's not true. Whatsoever things are honest, it's certainly not honest, those things that you're thinking about. Whatsoever things are just, it's definitely not that. Whatsoever things are pure, it's the, those sexual sin thoughts you're thinking about are the opposite of pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, not that either. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So those thoughts you're happen, having that's leading you to these sexual sins, it doesn't match with this verse. Most likely, <clears throat> if you're struggling with adultery, your thought life killed you long ago. I'm talking about when you were a young teenager. If you're struggling with adultery, I guarantee you were struggling with these thoughts early on. And you didn't just go to bed with another woman you weren't married to. It started with a look. You committed the adultery in the heart first, and then you acted on the thoughts of your heart. But if your mind is full of lovely thoughts, you don't leave any room for those lustful thoughts to have a place in your head. If you cram your mind full of lovely thoughts, there's no room for lustful thoughts. Now the devil's going to try to come and take something from your past and put that thought in your head. The unclean spirits can put thoughts in your head. 
Paul said, neither give place to the devil. You got to try your best to lock the door of your mind, bolt it up, full of lovely thoughts, and don't give place to the devil in there. Don't give him a seat. Yeah, Ephesians 4.27 says, neither give place to the devil. And if you've been struggling with sexual sin for a long time, you've been looking at things that you shouldn't, your mind is all messed up. And here's a good verse for that. Paul says in Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you got to renew your mind. you got to transform your mind. And the only person that can do that is God through His Word. The only person that can do that is God taking that filthy mind of yours and, and washing it. And if, you're, if you can get your mind full of lovely thoughts, you don't leave room for lustful thoughts to have a place. And 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So Paul didn't just let lustful thoughts run through his mind. He casted down imaginations. He casted down every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. You know, those lustful thoughts that come into your mind, they don't have no respect for God's highness. You have to bring into captivity every thought. You, don't, you, you shouldn't let any thought hang around in your head that isn't obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to have lovely thoughts. Lovely thoughts redeem the time. You know, Paul over and over talks about redeeming the time because the days are evil. Here's some example of lovely thoughts. Meditating on Scripture, that's lovely thoughts. If you have a problem with your thought life, and I've told you this before, get you some index cards, write Scripture on them, and throughout the day, pull those scriptures out of your pocket and memorize it. Meditate on those scriptures. It occupies your thoughts. You're giving room to lovely thoughts in your mind instead of dirty thoughts. Meditating on scripture is lovely thoughts. Thinking about eternity with the Lord. Thinking about heaven. Thinking about New Jerusalem. The millennium. Those are lovely thoughts. Setting your affection on things above. If you got your affection set on things above, you're thinking about lovely thoughts. Thinking about the Lord and conversations with the Lord, that's lovely thoughts. And you can't go wrong with those. So lovely thoughts don't leave room for lust. Think on the, these things. So you need to get away from anything that's going to cause you to have dirty thoughts and start cramming your mind full of lovely thoughts. Okay, the next thing. Lean on the Scripture. You're going to have to learn to lean on the Scripture. Because like I just said, it goes along with be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way you're going to do that is to let the Scripture wash your mind. Because your mind is so fogged up and clouded from all those things that you've been doing over the years. It's like you need the Lord to just take the Scripture and, scr and scrub your brain with it. And in Psalm 119... In verse 9, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You need your brain washed. 
You've been brainwashed by the world. You've been brainwashed by TV, entertainment, all that stuff you've been looking at. Now you get you need to get brainwashed by the word of God. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. You see, all that stuff you've been watching has made you desensitized to certain things. You don't even see how bad your sin is. But when you open the scriptures and you let them begin to transform your mind, you start seeing sin for how bad it really is. Romans 7, 13. It says, Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. So sin by the commandment becomes exceeding sinful. When you look at the scriptures and you see the commandments of God, it makes your sin finally look sinful. And not just look sinful, it's going to be exceeding sinful. You know, some people don't see things like they're as bad as they really are, but you get next to somebody who's in the scriptures, separated from the world, not conformed to the world, and they see things as exceeding sinful. You're going to have to lean on the scriptures to transform your mind. And what does the Lord Jesus want to do for us? Ephesians 5. 25, he says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He wants to cleanse you with the washing of water by the word. So you have to lean on scripture to get rid of those dirty thoughts. And if you don't lean on the scripture, you're never going to be able to think on those lovely thoughts of Philippians 4.8. So lean on the scriptures. You know, when you get up, if you can, instead of turning the TV on, instead of looking on your phone, scrolling through TikTok for 15 minutes, get out the Word of God. Just quit being lazy. Even if you don't want to, just get it out and read a few chapters. You lean on the scriptures. Then on your first break, instead of sitting there eating and dedicating the whole time to eating, get the Word of God out and read it. Or have it laid out and read it as you're eating. You know, that's a lot of wasted time. Then on lunch, do the same thing. On your next break, do the same thing. And then you could even get it on audio. Listen to the Word of God on audio. You got to lean on the Scriptures. What did the Lord do in Matthew chapter 4 when the devil was tempting him? He kept saying, it is written. It is written. It is written. Over and over. The devil would tempt him and he would just come back with another Scripture. And then you think about Michael the archangel when contending with the devil and they disputed about the body of Moses. It says he, did, he didn't bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. How do you get the Lord to rebuke the devil? Well, when the devil tempts you to do something, you say a verse out of your mouth that goes along with what he's trying to tempt you to do, and that's rebuking the devil. For example, he's telling you to look at this woman and lust after her. You just quote the Lord Jesus and say, If a man look on a woman to lust after her, he's committed adultery with her already in his heart. That is the Lord rebuking the devil. It's not you rebuking him. It's you're saying the scriptures where the Lord can rebuke him. So you see, you get those scriptures in you, and it's going to cut out a lot of your sin problem. So lean on the scripture. And the next thing. Let God choose your friends. And you know the great verse. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 
Evil communication corrupts good manners. You get around wicked people, the more likely you're going to be wicked. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Let God choose your friends. If you're hanging around friends that are encouraged, they're going to keep encouraging you to keep up with the sinful behavior because they're doing it themselves. They're just going to leave you further and further astray. Let God choose your friends. You know, you don't want to be a lone wolf. But it would almost be better to be a lone wolf than to get around people that are struggling with the same things you are. You need to get around people that's a little bit far, farther along than you are. Somebody that's spiritually mature. Somebody that you can look up to. Maybe a, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, somebody like that, that you can see they're in the scriptures. They're trying to live right. And they may not be perfect, obviously, but you need to let God choose your friends and not just keep hanging out with any old dog that comes along and letting them corrupt you even further. You know, the Bible says, follow not a multitude to do evil. You may have a whole bunch of friends, but they're just leading you down an evil path. You know, I've noticed a lot of people, they may start doing good, but then their friends, they drag them right back down. Let God choose your friends. So if you lean on the scripture, let God choose your friends. Get around people because lone wolves get lost. Labor with your hands and you'll be too tired to get into mischief. You think about it. You get up at four o'clock in the morning four or five in the morning and then you go to work all day and all day while you're at work you're doing something with the scriptures you're getting around people you're being around your wife more you try your best to kick evil thoughts out which that could be a job in itself and trying to place those lovely thoughts in and then you're Letting God choose your friends. You're cutting out on a lot of sexual sin. You're going to be, after all that, you're going to be too tired to do your sexual sins. You think about, you think about probably the worst time of your sexual sin in your life. I bet it was when you had too much free time. You know, well, that was one of the sins of Sodom. Abundance of idleness. They had so much free time, they were able to get into all that, all that sin. Ezekiel 16, 49. It said, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Too much time to sit around and think dirty thoughts. Too much time to sit around and just get into all types of sin. You stay busy. You stay busy for the Lord. It's going to cut back on a lot of your sexual sin. I'm not saying you're going to be 100% cured. The devil's good, still going to come try and tempt you, place thoughts in your mind. But it's going to cut, be cut back. So let every man have his own wife. Try your best to get you a godly wife if you can. Looks can kill. Look another way. Just look right on. Look straight forward. Don't look. As bad as you want to look, don't look. Leave the path of evil women. Don't even get around women that would be okay with committing that act. Learn to see women as mothers and sisters and aunts and sister-in-laws, mother-in-laws. Learn to see them as somebody that's important to somebody else. Lasciviousness takes everything you have, so give your everything to God. Lone wolves get lost, so get around other people, specifically good people. Let God choose your friends. Labor with your hands, and you'll be too tired 
to get into your sexual sin. Lovely thoughts don't leave room for lust. So think on these things. Philippians 4, eight. And lean on the Scriptures. You do that, it's going to cut back on so much of any sexual sins that you got going on.